Welcome to our review on health and diet. First thing we need to understand then is what we actually mean when we're talking about a balanced diet. So when we refer to a balanced diet, what we're referring to is a diet that's going to contain the right amount of all of the different foods and energy to keep you healthy. What we've got in the table then are the list of the different things we need for our balanced diet, why we need it, and also where we store it. So our first one on there then are the carbohydrates, which if you think back to low down in school, you know that they're made of simple sugars like glucose. Now the reason we need carbohydrates is to give us some energy and we'll store it in our liver as this substance called glycogen, or we will convert it into fats for storage. Second one on our list, the fats. These are made of fatty acids and glycerol. And again, we need it for energy. So we'll find that our fats become stored under the skin and around our organs as this stuff called adipose tissue. Third one on our list are the proteins made from amino acids. We use our proteins for growth and repair, and we can also use it for energy, but we don't actually store it at all. Next on our list is iron, which is an example of a mineral, and this is used to make haemoglobin, and again, we don't store it. Our vitamin example is vitamin C, which is going to be used to prevent scurvy, which was a rather unpleasant disease that made you have lots of sores and so on if you didn't get enough vitamin C in your diet. And again, we don't store that in our body. We also need fiber, which helps prevent constipation. And again, we don't store our fiber. And finally, we need water to prevent dehydration, which again, isn't stored in our body. One thing to bear in mind is that there is no one diet that suits everyone. The diet that you should eat will vary with a variety of different factors. So as your age changes, your diet will need to change. Different religions will have different diets because some religions obviously ban people eating certain substances. You may have medical reasons. So if you've got a nut allergy, obviously you're not gonna be eating any nuts. Your gender is gonna have an effect. So whether you're male or female, your different activity levels. Someone who is a builder up and down ladders all day long is going to need an awful lot more energy than someone who sits at a computer all day long. And then finally, personal choices. So if you've chosen to become a vegetarian, for example, then clearly your diet is going to be very different to someone who is not a vegetarian. Our first calculation in B1 then is for the EAR, okay, which stands for the Estimated Average Requirement. And this is all to do with protein. So in order to actually work out how much protein you should eat each day, what you do is you're gonna calculate your body mass in kilograms times by 0.6. And they give you that equation on your exam paper. You don't have to memorize it. If this question comes up, then in the question itself, it will tell you that the EAR in grams equals 0.6 times the body mass in kilograms. So remember you can use a calculator, so there's no reason to get that wrong. Read the question, find the body mass in kilograms, multiply it by 0.6, and that tells you how much protein you should be eating each day in grams. Now, obviously bear in mind that the protein needs are gonna vary dependent on age, whether you're currently having to breastfeed, so if you're in lactation, or if you're pregnant. What we do find is that there are some people around the world, particularly in those developing countries, that don't actually get enough protein to eat. Now, these tend to be as a result of overpopulation and having very limited investment in their agriculture. So what we actually find there is that they're relying more on second class proteins, which are ones that come from plants, than the first class proteins from animals. Because what you'll find is if you've ever seen any documentaries about people living in these developing countries, then they don't tend to have large numbers of animals around. So they might have a few animals, but they're not really like our animals in the United Kingdom. So what we tend to find is they're relying a lot more on the plants, therefore the second class proteins, than the meats for the first class proteins. And as a result of that, they may not get what's called the essential amino acids they need. Now, essential amino acids are ones that you can only get from your diet. Your body can't make them, you have to eat them. So if we don't take in those essential amino acids in our actual food supplies, then we just won't have them. If people aren't getting enough protein in a diet, then they can suffer from this protein deficiency disease called kwashiorkor. Now, this is very distinctive in its characteristics. 
If you look at the picture at the bottom there, you can see three children are suffering with quashia core. So you can look at their arms and see how thin they are, very thin legs as well. And then this almost abnormal when you see how thin their arms and legs are, this very swollen belly. Now that's not fat, that swollen belly is caused by a buildup of fluid inside. Now what we find as a result of quashia core is that they can't fight infections very well either. So you can see they're certainly not looking very healthy in that picture and then you can also compound that with the fact that they don't have a very good immune system. The lack of protein isn't just a problem in developing countries. In the developed countries like ours, what we will find is that there are still people who suffer with this lack of protein. However, unlike the developing countries where it's down to the lack of the right food being available, in countries like ours, it's more down to the choice not to eat that much. And that's usually linked in to low self-esteem or poor self-image. So when we've got people who are suffering from things like anorexia and bulimia, then they're not going to be having enough intake in their body to actually maintain their body weight. So what we actually find is if this gets very severe and the images you can see there are quite severe cases, then we can actually end up with very serious heart problems, poor health, and it can actually kill you. So it's very important to make sure that when you are thinking about your own body weight, that you're not going by some stereotype image of what the media portrays as the ideal body weight, that you are actually making sure that you are eating enough and not making yourself ridiculously thin. BMI is the second calculation we need to do in B1. So to calculate the BMI is going to be the mass in kilograms of the person divided by their height in meters squared. So this is, needs to be a very careful calculation. The way you use your calculator is going to be important in getting the right answer here. So some of your calculators that you use, when you hit that square button at the end, it squares the whole answer. We only want it to square the height. So make sure you play around with your calculator prior to going to the exam to make sure that you know that if you hit that square button, it's only going to be squaring the height. Okay, make sure that that is how you use your calculator. So in your question, you will get someone saying about their body mass being such and such in kilograms, their height is such and such. The one thing to watch there, and they sometimes throw this in, is they will put the height in centimeters. So make sure you convert the height from centimetres into metres first of all by dividing by 100. Then we're going to square the height and whatever that answer is, is what we divide the mass in kilograms by. That then gives us the value for our BMI or the body mass index. And then you can look it up with those reference values at the bottom to identify whether someone is the correct weight or not. So if they're under 18, then they're underweight. 18 to 25 is normal. 25 to 30 takes them to the overweight category and over 30 is in the obese category. So this is something that we can actually use to just reference where someone's weight falls in terms of their height. Because we can't just turn around and say, oh, if you're 14 years old, then you should be 50 kilograms. Because obviously people of different heights will therefore need to be a different body mass to be healthy. Finally, one of the big problems that faces the world today is obesity. So we've got an awful lot of obese people living around the world. And the big problems that we find there is that people who are obese are actually a bit of a drain on the health systems. Because if you're obese, you are far more likely to suffer from heart disease, from diabetes, arthritis, and breast cancer. And all of those obviously require treatment on the NHS. So just as a result of poor eating habits leading to obesity, we've got all of these other diseases that we then have to cater for.